Hey YouTube, let's talk about my air system. Alright YouTube, this is Brian, coming at you today with a little bit different type of video. Um, some people have been asking what all goes into my air system uh, on some of my recent videos, so I thought I would uh, just kind of go over it. I'm not going to get super in-depth, but I'll just kind of give you a basic overview of what I did and uh, how I did it. Um, basically, I mimicked a good buddy of mine, Mike Mann's uh, air system, uh, just kind of did what he did. So. Um, if I don't cover something, he's got some little bit better in-depth videos. This is cool. Looks like it may be breeding time for the Umbies. But anyway, um, what I used, uh, first of all, I'm going to show you down here. I've got an extra air pump on standby. Uh, this is the, uh, the AP100 by Danner, Pondmaster. Um, same one is used, and I've got it up there on that little uh, hanging down shelf type thing that I made. Um, take a quick look up here. I've got a fan that's not on right now. If you do ever notice that it's getting warm, um, you can uh, put a fan on it. Uh, but so far it's been cool enough down here where I haven't had to do that. Um, and basically how it's set up is you can see there's a hose that comes out the other end and just goes over to um, to the PVC system uh, over there. And the PVC, it ends over there, but it basically runs around almost the entire basement up around the ceiling over to that point over there. And if I needed to, I could, uh, if I ever got rid of the shelving and put tanks there, I could just easily connect more lengths of uh, PVC and we'd be good to go. Um, let's try to get a good look. So what I do is I, um, I, uh, I tapped holes and placed these uh, valves in the holes and then they run airline tubing down to the filters. Um, as you can see over here, well, maybe you can't see it. Uh, hang on a second. There we go. All the way around. So, uh, what are the filters that I'm using and what are these lines running to? Uh, let's find a clear shot of one. These are uh, sponge filters. I use different amounts and different size tanks, but these are the ATI uh, number five, I believe. These are the ATI number fives. And I got mine at Gemco because I needed to buy a bunch of them and they have a good deal in bulk. So the, uh, valves that I was showing you that I use are right here. I've got the double type so you've got what you can hook a hose up here and control the airflow with this little lever then I've also got one that's wide open or closed it's got a, a, re a removable cap on it so each valve you can run two lines off of which is nice. There are various places you can buy these and as you can see, they kind of go all the way around the fish room. I tap them in at uh, various places where there's tanks, and then they just go down to the filters. Uh, sometimes the fish do like to chew on the filters, as you can see here. Here's a nice new one. But yeah, the, the, the air system in a fish room is really going to lower your bills if you have um, quite a few tanks like I do. I also use them in my shrimp tanks. I use different filters in there. As you can see, I use the, uh, the dual sponge filters. Um, but I still have these hooked up to the same system. I also hooked up in a couple areas, the ball valve. Sorry for the purple uh, primer and cement. 
them do a real good job. But I've got a couple areas. Here's another one with the ball valve where I can turn off a section if I need to. So say I were to do something else over on this side of my fish room, I could turn it off over there or over here and everything beyond that point, uh, the air would stop. Depending on how many tanks you're using, you might need to keep a valve open at all times. I don't need to do that because I got enough filters going and uh, it's unnecessary, but uh, that is a possibility uh, that you may need to do as well. Um, the only other thing is what happens if, if, if the, the um, pump fails. These are you know diaphragm pumps, so the diaphragm can go, can go out. You can pick up a, a diaphragm repair kit for like 15 bucks or so. You can fix it yourself. Something uh, that is highly recommended is keeping the second pump on hand if you can. Luckily I got this for a decent price because uh, Mike was shutting down his fish room. So uh, I was able to pick up this used. And that way um, if you're in a pinch and something goes out you can just hook up the new one right away and then repair the old one later. But that basically covers it. Um, I know this isn't a real long and real in-depth video, but there's not a lot of, um, you know, things to talk about. Um, I don't have it handy, but as far as uh, um, tapping the holes, you would use a, you would drill the holes. I forget the size, and then you would buy a, a, a tap offhand. I forget what kind of tap it is. Um, but again, like I say. Um, Check out uh, Mr. Man 316's channel, and he's got a little bit more in depth where he's actually tapping the holes and everything like that. Um, that'll get you the information you need there. So, hope this helped anybody that's thinking about setting up a uh, air system for their fish room. Um, it's so far has already uh, noticed the savings in electricity. I took off. I don't know. 10 or so canister filters and about the same in hang on the back filters and um, obviously those depending on the size run anywhere from you know 20 to I think my worst my biggest uh, filter was running 55 watts and that's constant that's on all the time so down in the fish room the only two canisters I have anymore are these two FX6s for my two tens Otherwise, every single tank is run on air filters, or sp excuse me, sponge filters only. So it's almost a 100% uh, air filtration system in the fish room. Any other questions, let me know. Comments. Uh, if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe. I do uh, post regular updates on my fish room. I keep uh, all sorts of cichlids, uh, shrimp, and I've got a reef tank as well. So. Appreciate everybody that watches. Uh, Till the next video, take care.